everybody, welcome to the channel. Please like and subscribe. And when we get to a thousand subscribers, we're gonna do subscriber giveaways. This video is about the print settings for Cura for printing the foaming PLA, such as the ColorFab and the eSun product. So uh, the, the Sorecraft designs are different than other designs that are out there and uh, might require some slightly different settings that if you just check to make sure before you spend the time printing, you'll end up with better prints. So the print settings that are available on the website, as well as in with the instructions, are good for both the Color Fab and for the eSun products. Uh, the Color Fab is available in different colors, uh, other than just white. I haven't really noticed much of a difference between the eSun product and the ColorFab product, um, other than the price. The, in the eSun product, it's only available in this kind of off-white color, but it's available, it's, it's readily available now where it was hard to get uh, just a, a month or so ago. But, and you can see that and you can kind of see. So the eSun is kind of a little beige, whereas the color fab is more white. Bigger spool of material. This is a full kilogram of material for $45, whereas this was only 750 grams. So it's not as much. And it was $58 from Matter Hackers. I know there's other places you can get it, but it was still, I had to pay for shipping. It came out to somewhere in the, it was close to $70 for the spool, but you can get this in different colors. The nice thing about the white is you can paint it whatever color you want it to be. And uh, it paints pretty well. Um, I could have done a better job with masking, but it, it worked out. Let's, let's talk about print settings and the different materials. On the Sorecraft website, under settings and building, there is a chart with all of the settings for Cura for PLA, PETG, as well as the foaming lightweight PLA for ColorFab and eSun. In Cura, start with a standard quality print profile and modify the settings from there. Once you've modified all the settings and sliced the part, you can do a preview and look closer detail as to what Cura has done differently. This particular part, the vertical tail, has some areas where the combing mode doesn't quite work correctly and it goes outside the perimeter of the part. As Cura updates, we will continue to refine the settings to hopefully fix issues such as this. But it's not really that big of an issue and it's easy to take care of after it's been printed. To see all these things, you can go into the color scheme and turn them on and off just to see why Cura might be doing some of the strange things that it does. So the combing mode is a pretty important parameter that you need to change for the lightweight PLA to get the parts to look properly. So here's an example of the same part sliced in Simplify 3D. And if we zoom in, you can see how Simplify does a much cleaner job of combing mode than Cura does. All of the combing moves are done within the parts perimeter and the wall. Simplify 3D just does a fantastic job of 
understanding the geometry and slicing it properly, and understanding the wall thicknesses that need to be created in order to get a good part. Now, once you've printed it, you'll see that area that Cura went outside the bounds of the printed part. And these, I'm just rubbing my finger across it and they, they come, they come right off. But, you know, it's just, it's another detail you have to take care of when you're getting it ready to assemble. You just have to, you know, clean up a little bit more stuff. Here is a good example of the wing saddle. You know, it, it's exactly how it came off the print bed. There is, you know, a few rough places inside, but easy to clean up. So this is a rough gen version two. Uh, slope, slope, slope soaring glider with the 1.2 meter four servo wing. It, it has a carbon spar both along the front and in the middle uh, and some other carbon supports running through the fuselage. It's really needed with this foaming PLA to give it the rigidity it needs in order to keep from wiggling around too much. It, out of PLA, it weighs all up ready to fly is 770 grams and this with the lightweight PLA the foaming type it comes in at 470 grams so that's a 300 gram weight savings just by changing the material this thing can fly in just about any wind condition as long as the air is rising a little bit it, it's so easy to fly very aerobatic fun fly and you can go even lighter weight by using a two servo wing such as this and save yet another 40 grams so then the all up flying weight is only 440 grams let's go show you how this flies All right, so it's printed in lightweight PLA. It was all white and I added some paint to it. Uh, it's a three servo build. And uh, the nose cone is PLA, just cause, I don't know, the lightweight PLA seemed a little flimsy. For the nose cone, this will give the radio a little bit of crash prevention and needed a little bit of extra weight up front. Balance pretty good. Not my favorite flying spot. It's a little south though. So hopefully and this thing this thing weighs 445 grams. Alright. Lightweight PLA maiden. Here we go. Mm. Yeah, it flies awesome. Oh, this should be easy to land. So this is just a three servo build. Lightweight PLA. Oh. 
Oh, it's awesome. Rough Gin version two in lightweight PLA. All right, we're up on Mount Zion. Here is a four servo wing, foamed lightweight PLA rough gin. Where to throw out? Uh, weighs 480 grams. Should fly great. Oh, it's Maybe I'll... 702 meters. The wind's hardly blowing. Might be three, maybe five miles an hour. Hey now. That wasn't bad. 